now let me discuss about the topic of glaucoma now if you see this particular glaucoma glaucoma it is characterized by increase in the intraocular pressure right it is a clinical condition which is characterized by increase in the intraocular pressure if you take the normal intraocular pressure normal intraocular pressure is around 10 to 21 millimeters of mercury right that is a normal intraocular pressure now in patients with glaucoma because of raised intraocular pressure that will cause the progressive damage to the optic nerve right so what is happening in these individuals because of raised intraocular pressure for longer duration there is progressive damage of the optic nerve right progressive damage of the optic nerve next the other important thing is why this particular intraocular pressure is raised now in these individuals the intraocular pressure becomes more than 21 millimeters of mercury right the intraocular pressure will be more than 21 millimeters of mercury now this increase in the intraocular pressure that is the raise in the intraocular pressure or intraocular tension it occurs due to two reasons one reason is right one reason is either due to excessive production of the aqueous humor right that is due to excessive production of aqueous humor within the eye or the other reason is the aqueous humor is being produced but it is not drained out properly right so the other reason for increased intraocular pressure is because of less drainage right because of the less drainage of the aqueous humor so remember this raised intraocular pressure either it is because of increased production of the aqueous humor or because of less drainage of the aqueous humor now now you take the drugs which are used in glaucoma right drugs which are used in the treatment of glaucoma what do they do either they will decrease right either they will decrease the secretion of the aqueous humor or what they do is these drugs they will increase the drainage right they will increase the drainage of the aqueous humor now now what are those group of drugs remember those group of drugs which will decrease the secretion of the aqueous humor are like these drugs which will decrease the aqueous humor secretion are number one we have beta blockers that is the very important group of drugs which are used in the treatment of glaucoma and apart from that we have the alpha 2 agonists and then we have a carbonic anhydrase inhibitors they will also reduce the aqueous humor production so the other group of drugs are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors so these are the drugs which will decrease the aqueous humor production the drugs are beta blockers alpha 2 agonists and as well as the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors next next let me discuss those group of drugs which will increase the outflow the drugs which will increase the outflow of the aqueous humor is like you have myotics right which will increase the drainage then we have another important drug that is called dipivephrine right the other important drug is the dipivephrine and the other drugs are the prostaglandins so what these drugs will do myotics dipivephrine and as well as prostaglandins they will increase the drainage or by increasing the outflow now now let me discuss the individual drugs right 
what are the examples of the beta blockers what are the examples of the alpha 2 agonists and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and then like we have a group of drugs which will increase the drainage now this particular increase in the drainage right this increase in the drainage of the aqueous humor either it might be because of increase in the uveoscleral outflow right either because of increase in the uveo scleral outflow or the other reason is because of increase in the trabecular outflow right either by increase in the trabecular outflow now let me tell you those group of drugs which will increase the uveo scleral outflow and those group of drugs which will increase the trabecular outflow now let me tell you the drugs which are used in the treatment of glaucoma now we have a group of drugs which will decrease the aqueous humor production and we have a group of drugs which will increase the aqueous outflow right the drugs which will increase the aqueous outflow now now let me tell you the group of drugs which will decrease the aqueous humor production the group of drugs which will decrease the aqueous secretion or the aqueous humor production is we have beta blockers then we have alpha 2 agonists and then we have carbonic anhydrase inhibitors okay the group of drugs what we have is number 1 beta blockers then we have the alpha 2 agonists and then we have the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors right carbonic anhydrase inhibitors okay. so these are, these are the group of drugs which will decrease the aqueous humor production now you take these beta blockers again these beta blockers we have the cardio selective beta blockers and as well as non selective beta blockers which are used for decreasing the aqueous humor production so these include the cardio selective drugs and the second one is right the second one is non selective drugs you take this cardio selective drugs the cardio selective drugs they are bitoxalol right we have bitoxalol and the other drug is levobitoxalol right the other drug is levobitoxalol so these are the cardio selective beta blockers which will reduce the aqueous humor production next next we have the non selective beta blockers which will reduce the aqueous humor production the non selective beta blockers are right they include timolol is non selective cardio selective beta blockers are the one which will act selectively on beta 1 receptors right they selectively block the beta 1 receptors whereas non selective they act on the various other beta receptors as well so these drugs they include timolol then we have the another very important drug that is levobunolol right levobunolol and the other important drug that is cartiolol okay so these are the non selective beta blockers which will reduce the aqueous humor production next next we have the alpha 2 agonists if you take this alpha 2 agonists they include brimoridin right these drugs they include brimoridin and the other one is apraclonidin okay so brimoridin and as well as apraclonidin they act by stimulating the alpha 2 receptors 
and thereby they will decrease the aqueous humor production. And you take this carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. The carbonic anhydrase inhibitors which will reduce the aqueous humor production is we have acetazolamide then we have dorsolamide right acetazolamide dorsolamide and as well as brinzolamide right and as well as brinzolamide so these are the group of drugs which will reduce the aqueous humor production by inhibiting the carbonic anhydrase enzyme these are also the group of diuretics as well next you take the group of drugs which will increase the aqueous outflow the group of drugs which will increase the aqueous outflow is again the increase in the aqueous humor outflow is by two types one by increasing the trabecular outflow right by increasing the trabecular outflow and the second one is by increasing the uveoscleral outflow right by increasing the uveoscleral outflow now you take the group of drugs which will increase the trabecular outflow they include pilocarpin they include the physostigmine and the other drug is dipivephrine okay so the drugs are pilocarpin then we have physostigmine and then dipivephrine okay now you take this particular dipivephrine dipivephrine it is an alpha 2 agonist right it is an alpha 2 agonist now we have a group of drugs which will increase the uveoscleral outflow and thereby increasing the aqueous outflow the drugs are latanoprost right the drugs are the latanoprost and the other drug is bimatoprost right the drugs include mainly the latanoprost and as well as the bimatoprost so these are the drugs which will increase the aqueous outflow right so the group of drugs which are used in the treatment of glaucoma are the one which will reduce the aqueous humor production and the drugs which will increase the aqueous outflow and thereby these particular drugs what they do they will decrease the intraocular pressure and thereby preventing the optic nerve damage.